Welcome into the Cowboys Report, presented today by True Classic Tees. I am wearing one, and so should you. End the old year with a new you. In clothes, it'll give you the confidence to tackle whatever 2023 resolutions you have, be it on the field or off the field, depending on who you are. Get 25% off at trueclassictees.com slash chat when you use promo code chat. Let's hit the Sean Payton rumors off the top here, because of course we're doing that again. It, it's Sunday. You know what that means? NFL Media puts out the stories of the week, and that includes Sean Payton and the Cowboys. This time, though, not as optimistic on Payton joining up in Dallas. NFL Network's reports Sean Payton does not think the Cowboys' job is going to be an available one. Now, Payton's the big fish on the coaching market, although I would argue most of the jobs are really not that appealing. We'll go more in depth on that here in a moment. But here's what Rapport said this morning. My understanding, guys, is even Sean Payton doesn't consider this to be a potential opening. It seems Mike McCarthy is safe. We'll see what happens on Monday night. If it's a Chargers S disaster, which we'll talk about them in a little bit too. Eh, you know, maybe things will feel a little bit different here from that standpoint. There are five open jobs right now. Arizona, Carolina, who as we sit here for minutes, just put in a request to interview Sean Payton. So they are apparently in the sweepstakes after all. Seemed like they weren't going to be. Denver, Houston, and then there's Indianapolis as well. I would wonder if maybe Denver or Arizona are the most appealing jobs for Sean Payton. I would have doubts that the Saints would want to send Payton in division. Remember, it would require a trade. The one job that intrigues me the most for Peyton, of course, outside of Dallas, and that it comes open, is the Chargers job, which may or may not come open this year after the Chargers had a disaster and choked and blew a 27-0 lead, and it seems like uh, you got to fire Brandon Staley, right? I mean, I know if we were all Cowboys, if we're, if we're all Cowboys fans, if Dallas did that, we would be clamoring for Mike to go, and I think it would probably be enough for Jerry to fire him. But in the end, if you just beat the Bucks. All this conversation's probably uh, moot. Now, in the event that you end up having a disastrous uh, divisional round, so we could potentially re revisit it. But we all feel a lot better if you just beat Tampa about this team, this franchise, this quarterback, this playmaker, this defense, all of it. Everything feels better if that ends up happening. But I don't know how much confidence there is in that. So let me know. What is your confidence level in the Dallas Cowboys beating the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? Scale it for me from one to 10. One is on the low end, 10 on the high end. I'm going to make this the pinned comment on today's video. So if the ad break comes here on YouTube, take advantage of it. Head down there and get those votes in for me at the pinned comment right now. I anticipate seeing a lot of not that low numbers for a team that you should beat the Bucks, but I understand the lack of trust. And I know that every year is different, but it's also not. It's not different when the concerns we had this time last year of can you run the football or are you just going to commit to one yard or two yards on first down? I have issues there. Your defense suddenly can't get stops. Your offense was better than what it was down the stretch last year, but you're coming off your worst game of the year. You, you folded last year down the stretch. Are you in danger of doing it again? I understand every single fear and concern that comes with it. I expect the answers to be low. But as for the Mike Sean Payton conversation, I also understand those who are like, Mike should maybe get fired. And I don't disagree uh, with that. But he's been very good this year. Cowboys are 12 and five back-to-back -back years for the first time in a, in a since the dynasty, basically. Back-to-back -back playoff spots since last coach Jerry Jones fired after back-to-back -back playoff spots in Chan Gailey, which he always said was a mistake. We'll see if he still feels that way potentially this time around. And frankly, the resumes and only the resume, so on paper, of Mike McCarthy, Sean Payton, don't look that different. Uh, you're talking very similar careers, 16 years versus 15 years, a slightly better winning percentage for Sean Payton than Mike McCarthy. Now, he's been better the last five years. That includes the end of the tenure in Green Bay and the one bad year in Dallas for Mike when everyone was hurt. The playoff success, super similar. Super Bowls, identical. The resumes are not that different. And I think Payton's a good coach. I think it is a fair question to go, how much better of a coach is Sean Payton than Mike McCarthy? So with that in mind, pick a head coach for me. MM for Mike McCarthy, SP for Sean Payton. Head down to the comment section and get those votes in for me. Which head coach would you hire or pick, knowing the cost difference between McCarthy and Sean Payton? 
True Classic will make you guys uh, feel better. Make you feel your best by accentuating the places the eye goes to first, if you can catch my drift there. Most men's tees are designed to look good on only certain body types. That's why True Classics team designed them to make fellows of all sizes feel confident in their clothing. They taper off towards the bottom, but they fit tighter on the chest and shoulders. Desirable look that can be achieved by every body type out there. They also offer other men's wear as well. The active wear line makes physical features more flattering, and fabrics are engineered for high-intensity workouts. They also just released new button-downs and chinos, which are perfect for a night out. And, of course, you can never go wrong uh, with their classic comfort collection of ultra soft tees, briefs, hoodies, and much more. They got a pack builder on your website so you can customize what bundle you want and save more. Whether it's a dad bod, like maybe your boy, rip bods, or just your average Joe, they have you guys covered. Get 25% off at trueclassic.com slash chat. That's trueclassic.com slash chat. Use promo code chat for 25% off your order. That link's going to be in the comment section and in the description. The promo should auto apply with the link, trueclassic.com slash chat. If it doesn't, it's okay. Use promo code chat. Both of them are in the comment section and the description on today's show. Let's get to the injury news, as promised. Lot to unpack here. First up, I guess the main negative, Trayvon, if it is a negative, Trayvon Mullen has been ruled out this week due to illness. He probably wasn't going to play anyway. They gave him a lot of reps last week and didn't do that much with it. Uh, amid the buzz of maybe Xavier Rhodes is now your guy at cornerback too because we're just trying out new things. Uh, Mullen will not go, leaving him as one of the only known inactives because the other guys all appear to be healthy. Tyler Biadish. I also mentioned uh, Tyron Smith is is a is fully good to go. Leighton Vanderesh is good to go. Demarcus Lawrence, uh, Biadish, Vanderesh, Lawrence, and Tyron Smith were all full participants in the Saturday practice. That's the final day of practice, actual practice for the Cowboys. They have no designations for Sunday. We'll come back to Jonathan Hankins, but there was one player who missed practice on Saturday, Micah Parsons. Well, he had a pretty good reason. Mispractice due to the birth of his daughter. So congrats to Micah, adding a member to the family. Everyone head down to the comments section. Type in congrats to Micah. Everything's doing good on that front from what Micah has said on social media. So good reason to mispractice, and he'll he'll be back out there, maybe with the extra bonus of having to be, be, uh, just become a dad with, with his daughter. So we'll see how that goes for Micah, but he'll be he'll be just fine. As for Hankins, he does need to be activated from injured reserve to play against the Buccaneers. Now, there is one open roster spot, but the Cowboys don't just have Hankins likely coming back. Matt, Matt Farniak, who wasn't ready last week, the Cowboys are planning to have ready this week, also needs to be activated to the active roster to play. You guys are good at math. That means with the one open roster spot there is right now, one can go to Farniak, one can go for Hankins, that means somebody else has to be released from the active roster or put on IR with an injury or an injury. Uh, maybe the Cowboys could have tried that with Dakota Shepley. He, they end, he end up cutting him because he needed him for a day. Now they bring back Farniak, but it eh, didn't work out very well there. So a roster move is needed for the Cowboys to make room for both of those guys getting back to the active roster. Five names I'm going to keep an eye out for based on what the Cowboys have been doing with their roster. Number one is Trayvon Mullen, especially if you're going to try to activate Xavier Rhodes for the game, which may or may not happen. We'll know, I think, uh, tonight or tomorrow morning on that front. Mullen is already out for this game with illness. You could probably come up with an injury to put him on IR if you want to. That's typically frowned upon, but... Saturday or su Sunday walkthrough injury. There, there you go. I mean, no, no one's going to snitch on you. Mullen isn't, he's kind of buried there, so I don't think it makes that much sense. Next up is, or I think it does make sense, Marquise Bell. I like Bell quite a bit. He's just basically been the active roster stash for this Cowboys team the past couple of weeks. Uh, Bell has not played very much this year, mainly special teams, the occasional defensive rep there. He was a healthy scratch. They gave Tyler Coyle a chance last week. Come up with the injury. Put him on IR. You don't need him. Mark, uh, Israel Mukwamu was also a scratch last week, but I, I'd be pretty surprised if he ended up not being on at least the 53-man roster moving forward. 
Next up is Jalen Tolbert. The Cowboys are not going to play him. Uh, he's been a healthy scratch for most of the year. They have T.Y. Hilton, Noah Brown, Gallup, Kevontae Turpin, C.D. Lamb, etc. There's no room for Tolbert on this roster. Again, barring other injuries, which might make you pause because you're not going to be able to get him through waivers. No chance of that. He's a third-round pick. If you put him on IR, he's out for the year because you're going to miss four, four games, so it doesn't really fit from that standpoint. Will Greer has been a scratch every week since Dak Prescott came back. Um, I doubt you could get him through waivers. You're in the offseason. Teams can still claim to fill out their own 90-man rosters, so that gets a little bit dicey uh, from that standpoint. Even though Greer's going to be a free agent this year. Uh, but you don't need three quarterbacks, so figure it out from there. And the dark horse name, which I would be surprised by, is Quinton Bohanna. He was a scratch last week. He's been up and down the roster at various points this year. But if Hankins is back... They don't need Bohanna anymore. He has not been that great, frankly. And Chauncey Golston continues to emerge. So we'll see who ends up getting uh, relegated to injured reserve or practice squad with that other roster move needed for this team. Reminder, folks, we will be live for the Cowboys against the Buccaneers. So simply put, just make sure you're subscribed and don't miss out.